Cool. Hey guys, check out my new toy. Actually, this is not a toy, this is a weapon. It's a Cobra crossbow pistol. And when it's loaded, it holds 80 pounds of tension and shoots these tiny pointy little bolts with quite some power. So no, it's, it's not a toy, but it is fun. I picked this bad boy up during my road trip up through Northern California and it's really cool. I've shot it at targets a little bit, but I've noticed that these bolts that it comes with break quite easily. They're not super expensive, but I'd rather not constantly have to buy more. And you know what I'm getting at. I'm gonna 3D print some bolts. We're gonna see if we can 3D print some of these bolts and uh, see if they're decent for target practice at least. So let's see what I can do. As per usual, when I'm making functional objects, I'm gonna be working in Fusion 360 to make this model. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a half profile for the bolts, which I'm gonna revolve to create that round arrow-like shape. I used my calipers to measure the original bolt, and I'm gonna try to copy that as much as possible, but I will make slight changes because I want this to be very clean when it's 3D printed. So I'm gonna have to do some things to make it follow the rules of FDM printing. For example, I wanna print this lying down so that it's got a lot of strength along the length of the arrow, and that means I need a flat bottom to print up from. So I'll have to cut off a section on the bottom of the arrow. And as you can see, I created that cutting line that's horizontal, but I also created this second line that's tangent to the circle. And by measuring the angle between my horizontal line and that tangent line, I can make it so that the steepest angle that I'm printing at is say 45 degrees. So now if we cut this off, there will be a maximum steepness of 45 degrees. And if I decrease that, then I can print a little steeper so this is probably the least that I can cut off without making it a difficult print. And I'm also gonna mirror that cut to the top to keep this arrow symmetrical because we don't want it being lopsided or anything like that. So I'll do an extrude cut, slice those bits off the top and bottom. Now the point of this arrow is also gonna be tough because it's got quite an overhang and it's pretty tricky to print a point like that and not have it warp upwards. But for now, let's go ahead and focus on the tail. So we're just gonna go ahead and once again, copy the measurements of that original bolt and create this little tail fin centered along the right axis. And then I'll extrude that symmetrical across the center so that it's perfectly centered. And I'm gonna make this a new body because it's gonna be tough to print these two together. And I think it's actually better if I print them as separate parts, both for strength and in case, for example, one part fails, I can just reprint that and reuse the second half. So what I'm doing here is drawing a slot that's slightly wider than that tail fin, and then I'll go about halfway down and cut that away from the bolt only. Then I'll do another cut for the second half. That way both the fin and the arrow have slots that I can slide together and have it all fit into one piece, nice and clean. So I'm gonna create this little ramp that lets me make sure that that tail piece stays in. The fletching, that's what it's called. The tailpiece is called the fletching. So I'm gonna make these little ramps so that the fletching gets locked into place. I'll also model in these little bumps on the front of that fletching, and those will lock into some little cutouts that I'll put on the shaft of the bolt, and that'll help hold it into place as well. So I'll create these nice little round bits, and then I'll extrude those, and then I'll make that matching cutout in the shaft. Finally, I thought it might help to hollow out some of the shaft or cut away some material to make it as light as possible and maybe shift the center of balance towards the front a bit. So I created this cutout pattern and we've got an error. So that shut down Fusion. But basically, I finished up that job and you'll see what it looks like here when I print it out. As you can see, I'm debuting a new printer here. This is a Pano Space printer. It's nice and simple, PLA only pretty much. It forces you to use a raft and their proprietary software, but the prints came out looking pretty good. So let's just pop these parts off and stick together our arrow. Well, it looks like I made it a little bit loose, so my tolerances could have been tighter, but for now let's just glue it into place. 
so that we can actually shoot this and see what happens. As you can see, the center of mass is definitely further back on my arrow because I don't have that heavy steel tip. But you know what? Why not just go for it and see what happens? So let's load up this crossbow pistol and give it a shot with our PLA bolts. And you can see the tip here did warp because that was also a really steep angle, but let's give it a shot. All right, well, that was pretty quick, but it basically deflected off the top of my target. And when I searched for it, I found that it did break. So the tail part snapped off, even though that was glued in. Let's try this other one. And you can see I rounded the tip, so hopefully that'll help it fly a little more straight. All right, it definitely did go more straight, but it still did break into a few pieces. Maybe we just need something stronger than PLA plastic, so I printed these ABS versions on my Zortrax M200 3D printer. I also created this second version that kind of has a curve at the back because I had a feeling that the bowstring of the crossbow was actually entering that crack and ripping the arrow apart. But first, let's try the same exact one as before, but just with ABS plastic. Okay, so I think my hypothesis was correct. Let's see if this little curved slot helps out. Okay, that definitely should not have happened. Let's string it up again and try one more time. Hmm. Okay, I mean, we got a shot off, but it looks like that fletching actually fell off in midair. So I might have to make the tolerances tighter and make that notch that holds the two parts together a little bit sturdier. Also, I'm still getting a lot of misfires. And I think what happens is that when I flattened the sides of those arrows to make it more printable, it became too narrow and it's not sitting on the crossbow right. So in my next iteration, I'm gonna keep those flat sides, but I'm just gonna make everything a little wider so that it matches the width of the original bolt. I also printed this using the Zortrax Pet G material. And as you can see, I made that curve on the back even more dramatic so that it comes all the way from the side of the bolt and that back end where the string is gonna hit it is completely flat now. So let's go ahead, stick those together and it seems nice and strong. The point of the arrow looks good because I made it not quite as pointy. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Well, that was tough to see, but basically the arrow went all the way through the box and as it was passing through, the tail got ripped off. But the point still looks good, so maybe it's just a matter of having the right target. So I decided to fill my box with a bunch of heavy packing foam that came with my 3D printers. I'm gonna tape that down to get this nice foam target. All right, I think those changes were just what I needed because now I'm able to keep hitting on target pretty much every time and the arrows aren't breaking into a million pieces. This design looks like it might be a winner. So let's go ahead and test this out with a bunch of different materials. So I'm gonna use all these different Zortrax filaments, Z ABS, Z glass, Z Ultrat, Z hips, Z pet G, and this Z ASA Pro. First of all, just looking at the prints, the Z glass, the Z Ultrat, and the Z ABS were the three materials that printed the most clean. These prints came out pretty much perfect and the fins really hold together well. So. Let's go ahead and just try everything out, starting with that PETG once again. Okay, I think I hit the metal there because that one exploded. How about the Z Ultra? That one just went over and barely missed my target. How about the Z ABS? All right, finally a direct hit. And as you can see, it really lodged itself in there. So these things have quite some power. But as you can see, it's fully intact, so that ABS works really well. How about the hips material? All right, once again, I missed my target. And this one actually hit the wall on the back of my yard and bounced all the way back. So it stubbed the front, but otherwise it survived. Let's try out the ZASA. Pretty good shot, and it survived. Now onto this cool neon green Z glass. Boom, another direct hit. And this one actually went all the way through and got lodged somewhere inside of the box. All right, round two, Pedgy, boom. 
direct hit, and it survived. The Ultra, boom, another direct hit, and it survived. The Z ABS, a little bit to the top right corner, but you know what? It also survived despite going through the side of the box. How about that hips? Okay, so I missed again, and that one hit the far back wall. And before you just call me a bad shot, I think this one was actually a fault of the material because the hips was one of the messier prints that I got. So things didn't really fit together perfectly. All right, and the ASA, once again, it's a really great hit. And it went just far enough that the tail kind of started to come off, but both of them are still good for another use. And Z glass, boom, another perfect direct hit. So it seems like the darts are working much better and my aim has also improved. So how about a real challenge? Coming at you with some Z glass and it just nicks him. ABS, another narrow miss. The PETG went off to the side and the ZASA, well, wait a minute. You don't see the arrow, but that's not because I missed, but because it almost went clean through the orange. Pretty awesome. Z-Glass is a really stiff material, so it flew straight, but it did break. The Z-ASA and the Z-ABS, however, did survive. So naturally, let's see if we can shatter a dish. Starting with that Z-ASA again. No luck, that bolt just exploded. How about the ABS? Ah, a narrow miss just under the dish. So let's move on to that Z glass. All right, that's a little better. The bolt did break, but I did also take a good chunk out of this dish. So let's go ahead and try to finish the job with this PETG bolt. All right, right on target. Another bolt that sacrificed itself, but it did its job. All right, so by now the bolts are surviving multiple shots. I'm able to hit my target pretty accurately. I'm pretty happy with how this ended up. Looking at the damage, the Z ASA, the Z ABS, the Z Ultra, all very similar plastics seem to be the sturdiest and most resilient. All three of my Z ABS bolts survived, so that's a good sign for that material. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I would definitely call that a success. I mean, sure, I've got a ton of shattered bolts here, but I got some to actually work, and several of them work multiple times. A lot of them only shattered when they hit a plate or hit the wall at the back of my yard, but if they're going for a soft target, pretty much all these materials work quite well. I know this was by no means a very scientific experiment, so it's hard to say which material is the very best. I don't know, I'm just happy that these flew straight and I was actually able to keep things on target and I had lots of fun, so that's really all I care about. I'm not trying to become a master crossbow shooter. I just wanna be able to shoot at a target in my backyard and now I can do that with unlimited crossbow bolts, thanks to 3D printing and a little bit of design. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. You know I had fun. So until next time, stay safe and stay inspired.